Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of Transformed You. I'm your host, Mark DeJesus. I'm here with my amazing wife, Melissa. Melissa. <laughs> it's great to have you. I'm excited about today's show. We're going to get into another layer of transformational habits. Our whole goal in this series has been to help people to understand what are some of the key ingredients that could be very helpful in your prayer Bible study, dissecting what God is doing in your life, understanding what you need to break free to receive more healing of the heart, renewing of the mind, transformed relationships, what you need to see to break through barriers. And we have talked about two that we feel are very important. In this one, we want to talk about one that is very highly misunderstood and is not often used in the way that it can be used. And it's the power of repentance. Yeah. And I feel like I, I'm glad we're bringing this word out today because a lot of people don't understand it. There's a lot of, I think, yucky feelings around repentance of what it, what it means. Um, so I think it's good that we're bringing this out and yeah, helping the, people understand it in a better way. The yeah. first word, the first thought that comes to my mind from a traditional sense of repent is somebody standing on like a soapbox, right? And like <laughs> that's what I mean by yucky. Repent, right? For the kingdom of God is, you know, and, like a and, condemning repentance feels condemning. Yep. Yeah. And there is room for those strong, you know, repent for the kingdom of heaven yes. is at hand. There, yep. there is that. But I, I find there are two problems that people have in understanding repentance. One is the one you brought up, which mm -hmm. is the condemning perspective. The other one is that we see repentance as something that you do when you first receive Christ. And that's true. But we don't see it as an ongoing tool to use. It's a gift, really. Yeah. It's a gift from God that we can actually use to break agreement, to remove our agreement from sin strongholds issues in our lives that are holding us back it might even be like limiting belief systems or certain you know programmed things that we need to undo in our life repentance is the key repentance is the tool that you need to be able to activate effectively in your life and we're going to define it and as we define it that will help us shape our discussion today so i'll kind of give a simplified definition of it i know we can get complicated and into the greek and this and that but repentance is really speaking of changing from a way of thinking and living, turning from one direction into another. Yeah. Okay, so you're, 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 you have this change of thinking and living, so you're turning from one way of thinking and living and into another. So there's three parts to this. It's moving from one way of thinking, making the turn, mm. which we, 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 we get, we get right, lost in making right. the turn, right? And then moving into the new direction. This it's is, really a free. It's a word of freedom. Repentance is a freedom word, and we need to start seeing it in that way. That's right. Yes. So let's talk about the first part of it. The first part of the the definition here we're talking about repenting is to move from one way of thinking, and this takes the self awareness we talked about in the last episode. It takes the ability to discern and. The more you can discern the deeper root system, the better, because then you're not just repenting for branch behavior. So, God, I repent for this addiction, or I repent for this anger. Well, there's usually something in the root system that needs to really be dealt with. Yes, it's great to repent for your anger. Yes, it's great to repent for fear, of those things. But there's usually a lot of things underneath at the yeah, root system. Right. So we need to practice that self-awareness, the self-compassion, I don't have to condemn myself. Understanding the framework of our story and our journey to where we even got to the point that we need to have repentance. That's right. I find that the enemy must listen to true heartfelt repentance. Yeah. It is the key. Now, there are many people that they ask for prayer, help me, pray for me, and that's wonderful and that's great. But if I can get you to recognize and get you to engage healthy repentance it's going to help you undo agreements you have with the enemy and start walking into the freedom that's available for you. Now, traditionally, I think, too, there's some confusion because when we talk about repentance of sin, sometimes people confuse that with forgiveness. You know, there, there's something in their life and they go, oh, God, forgive me for it. Of course, the forgiveness is there. Right. Forgiveness is there at salvation. Forgiveness is ongoingly, ongoing, continually available. But repentance is now breaking the agreement. And we even talk to our kids about this because yeah. they'll they'll engage in something that they know isn't right and they'll go, sorry, 
and then do it again. Sorry,、mm-hmm. do it again. Sorry, and we've had to teach them in their own kid language what it means to engage repentance because now it's I'm changing the behavior. Isn't isn't repentance though too? And and even as we're teaching our kids, is a real connection. To what consequences are of allowing that pattern in your life? I think、right. when you're really truly repenting, you're making a decision to understand this has affected my life and I don't want it anymore. It's a and, real acknowledgement of that. And you're taking responsibility, right? And we live in a culture that doesn't want to take responsibility for their life. They want people to change. They want situations to change, and they want God to rescue them. Get me out of this. And we don't know how to take personal responsibility to go. No, I, for example, someone can recognize I think like a victim, and I'm I, I, I'm I'm empowering victim thinking, and it keeps me in a ditch. And I need to take responsibility, and I need to repent for this victim thinking. Now, what does that mean? That means I'm turning from it.、Uh, so there's the first definition of it, which is I'm moving away from this. But now I've got to like. It's like moving a giant cruise ship.、Mm-hmm. You know, it doesn't happen instantly. I've got to now make the turn, and now I've got to head into a new direction. When it comes to repentance, it's only effective a if I'm really heart connected and, I, and I'm making a responsible decision, and if I'm establishing what is the thinking and living I'm moving into. So, where this ha- where, where this was empowered in my life was. Fear. I didn't realize I could repent for fear, like I, when I had anxiety and panic attacks and all this. I didn't think like I could repent of this. Like that's really cool. I can I can tear up a contract that I have with fear and renounce it and repent for it and turn from its ways. So that was one illumination.、Mm-hmm. Then another illumination that God spoke to my heart was, okay, if every fear was out of your life, what would you think about? And I couldn't answer that question because I didn't know. Because I was so used to thinking about fear all the time, so that's when I learned the other aspect of repentance, which is now, what's the new direction that、right. I'm moving into? If I'm leaving fear, what am I moving into? That's、and、really a, good. And a lot of people say, "Well, I want anxiety gone, I want fear gone, so I just feel better." <laughs> right. I'm on this empty oasis. I just want relief. That's the wrong answer. That's not the new direction. Yeah, and I think even the power of repentance brings in the power you have to make choices in your life. For me, where your big one was understanding repentance of fear, mine was victim thinking.、Mm. I had a lot of self talk. Well, this is just what happens to me. I had a lot of victim mentality, and focus on what everybody had done to me to justify where I was at in my life. When I finally made the decision, no, this can change, and I need to repent for this thinking. It doesn't say what everybody did was okay, but it re- I needed to repent for where I had come under what everybody had done to me and left me in this. I'm in this place that I feel like I have、right. no choices. No, I repented for that way of thinking that moved me into getting now power in my choices back. That's right. That's the new pathway that、yes. you're establishing.、Mm-hmm. If I'm going to repent for victim thinking, right? Then I that means every day I'm taking responsibility for my life, and every day I have the ability to choose, right? I、uh, to give some other examples because there are some powerful areas that I've experienced repentance in. One is is fear,、uh, fear of man,、mm-hmm. anxiety. Oh, fear of man's a big one, right? It is self hatred. Yeah, wow. Self hatred. When I recognized how much self hatred it influenced my life.、Mm-hmm. When I repented of it, true heart repented. I could feel something draining out of my body. That's so true, right? It's like literally, I felt like this filtration system kick in, and like my thinking was clearing up. It was like I could feel a presence leaving. So, it's so, so powerful. So, so powerful, but yet、mm-hmm. at the same time, like wow, I wasn't taught this. I wasn't taught. You mentioned victim thinking. Oh my goodness, self pity, right? That like that was my coping mechanism of dealing with life, and when you break that, if you break self pity and victim thinking, Woo, those your are whole mamas, life, your、right? whole life changes,、mm-hmm. right? Because now your life is in in the hands of your decisions. Yes, I know God is in control, but that you are more empowered now to make a decision. Because the Bible talks about choose this day what you will serve, and. I had to make a decision. Do I want to choose life or choose death? Do what am I going to choose today?、Um, repenting for for how I 
was so self-condemning that was very powerful for me. Contempt. I actually was reading through the dictionary one day, and I was looking at the word contempt. Oh, I remember this. Mm -hmm. And I actually saw how I, because the word contempt means you look at somebody else with a disdain as though they're like lower than you. Yeah. Okay? And I looked at myself like that. I had this like on my shoulder, this guy is like, whatever, whatever direction I was going, it would bring the opposite. It's like the ultimate. Just always finding a way, always yeah. finding a way to put me down. Yeah. Like today's gonna be a good day. Well, you said that yesterday. You weren't very good at right. it. Right. Or, you know, I'm gonna move in this direction, and God's gonna be with me. Yeah. But what if you get too arrogant? It was always like. Right. It's that, like this subtle, self dismissive way of just subtly kind of moving you out of what life's fullest potential is. That's right. Right. Yep. So in order to do this effectively, though, in order to do repentance effectively, the goodness and love of Father God mm. needs to be, that's why we spend so much time, energy, and, and, and um, resource in emphasizing the love of Father God and his goodness. Because it is, Romans 2.4 tells us, it's the goodness of God that leads you to repentance. And that's why a lot of people don't understand the power of repentance, because it's not a response to being yelled at. It's a response to tasting of his goodness. When you see that power, love, and a sound mind is available to you, you go, man, I need to break agreement of this fear because this is good. Right. Why? You know, it's like you ever meet somebody who's just like a great relationship and you go, why did I tolerate that other person when I've got this? That's what repentance gets its strength off of. So Yes, I love that because we need to start changing the picture of, I need to repent. I'm so bad. I'm so bad to... Nope. The gift that's in front of us to receive right. once we make the decision to change. Right. Because in that, oh, I'm so terrible, that can fuel. Yes, so there's godly repentance. That's a part of it. Right. But godly repentance. I mean, I mean, I'm sorry, there's sorrow, but godly sorrow. Right. Right? Not the stuff that I, you know, I would like grovel. Oh God. Maybe if I grovel a little more, maybe, you know, it'll happen. And right. and that's not part. So, anyways, I want to go back to okay, so. I'm moving from, from one way of thinking, mm -hmm. and I'm making a turn. I'm turning, okay? So if I'm turning, the thing we don't give room for is the turning as a process. Right. I was just going to say, help people understand what is what is involved in the turning. What Because the turning can take time, right? Yep. yep. So what can be part of the turning process to help so, people? So I developed a, a, a routine prayer that I would use to break agreement. Some of it is in my fear book and in other books. And, and it was like a little card that I would use to, to repent and I'd renounce. And when I was in anxiety, it was a way for me to focus my prayers, right? Because I had to get out of this like, oh, God, help me. These, these, um, these, these prayers that we're kind of just throwing up there that are like generic. Right. I need to get specific. So I would pray it, you know, like I'm having an anxiety attack and I do the repent. Like, God, I've got to recognize this in my life. And I repent of it. I renounce of it. I receive your love and your forgiveness. I receive your cleansing, you know, and I, I would do that. And I'd get a little breakthrough. Then it would all come back again and I would pray and I'd do it again. And I found myself doing it over and over and over and over again. Now, I wasn't, let me make this very clear. I wasn't doing it over and over again because I needed God to hear it and he wasn't hearing it. I needed to repeat it because I needed to come into agreement with my turning and moving into the new direction. So... It took quite a bit of time for me to break that agreement with that chronic anxiety and move into the new pattern. It takes time to move out of chronic depression into the new pattern or out of hate or out of bitterness or out of anger or out of rejection. Rejection, rejection I find, many times takes the longest because yeah. it's infiltrated so much. So many areas, right? People yep. don't really understand, right? So if you read the rejection course, you'll see some of those areas. That takes time for the ship to turn. Yeah. So to use the analogy, when we first got um, married, we went on a honeymoon, and part of our honeymoon was we went on a cruise ship. It was a wonderful experience, but there was this thing that happened where I would be sitting there in our room, and we had a room that had a little little deck that would look out, like a little um, okay. balcony, and I would be looking at the port of where we were. They said, oh, we're moving now, we're leaving. So I'd look out there, oh, okay. Then I would be about whatever reading or sitting there. And I'd look back again and I'm like, we're not moving. Right. And you're like, yeah, we are. 
I'm like, I don't feel like we're moving. So then what I did was is I, I saw like the edge of the window and I would align my eye. I would look at the land like right on the edge of that. And I would see this like microscopic change where the boat was moving. Right. And I was like, oh, it is moving. I just couldn't see it. And that's the thing that's so important is as you're doing the daily walk, because what repentance is doing is it's breaking the agreement. It's detaching the agreement that you have with the enemy in your life. Now, this agreement may be through trauma in your life. It may be something generational. It happened with mom and dad, and it's now happening with you, and it's being repeated. It may be out of areas where you're brokenhearted. It also may be just a simple agreement. You weren't aware you came into agreement with something that is not of God. So it's not, repentance, I find, is not just a one-time act. It's a process. So yeah, what I good. find helps the process is two things. One is just compassionate repetition. Yeah. Like, just I'm just going to, it's okay. Compassion Patience. over your life. Compassion over the stuff that you've been through. But, uh, but as, I'm, as I'm repenting, it's compassionate. It's not like, oh, I'm not getting this right, so i got to repent more. Nope. I'm helping a lot of people get free from that kind of mindset. They're like, i got to repent for something else, and I'm still, I, I haven't gotten free yet. That means I haven't repented. No, that's destructive. Compassionate. It's like giving myself compassion and then also um, allowing myself to go, what's the new mindset that I'm mm-hmm. developing? What's the new mindset I'm leaving? So if I'm, for instance, self-hatred, when I recognized it, it became a whole book of what I was stepping into. I'm going to learn to love myself. When right. I got broke agreement of fear and anxiety, I had to realize, oh, I'm not moving into relief. I'm moving into boldness. I'm moving into courage. I'm moving into power, love, sound mind. If I'm breaking agreement with rejection, what's my new mindset mm-hmm. in relationships now? Yeah, and a lot of us don't know that. So I think especially in that process of where we're turning, that's a real good time of exchange with God, of, yeah. of Lord, I need new references for what healthy yep. self-love looks like, for healthy relationships that's as right. I'm turning and moving into the new. That's right. And I think that to add to it, it I, when I'm turning and making that new direction, I'm changing my focus now. I'm changing what, what gains my focus, I'm changing the story I keep playing, I'm changing what I'm looking for. Because when you're used to serving anxiety, you look for it. You look for things to verify the anxiety. Mm -hmm. If you're serving rejection, you look for things to verify rejection, right? Like People don't listen to me. They ignore me. Then you're going to look for times people ignore you to verify it, to keep that agreement intact. Well, if I break the agreement, it's like I'm not looking for that anymore. I'm I'm looking for new. I'm looking for hope. I'm looking for um, more... Uh, God-filled opportunities, mm-hmm. you know, for the, for that breakthrough. Right. And That's sometimes good. I find, just to kind of close this out, and you can feel free to share anything that you have, is um, I find sometimes it needs an action step to take, too, to really embed the repentance process. So, like, that's why it's helpful if you're, like, if you're repenting for bitterness because you realize you're holding unforgiveness towards people, what's the action step? Well, actually forgiving them. Um, sometimes that conversation, sometimes, you know, sending a note with a check on it to somebody right. or some kind of nail on the coffin action step. So if you're in chronic anxiety, some kind of step that causes you to face your fears, right? That really um, seals this thing that you're not turning back. Right. Because if we don't understand the process, we easily turn back. We go back to the old conditioning, the old way of thinking. We access that in a, in, a, in a snapshot moment. Um, so this is a new conditioning. It's like going to the gym. I'm exercising a new muscle that that hasn't been exercised. Right. I think for some people it may be just the simple fact of saying no. You know, what is your self-worth? You have the power to say yes or no. There are simple things That's that right. we can do to start exercising, really bringing out the power of who we are and turning from those things and moving into the new. You have the power to establish your agreements. Absolutely. And you have the power to disagree, to repent, to turn from one way of thinking and into another. That's been given to you. And God's not going to do that for you. He will love you. He'll patiently show you. But he's given this tool for you as a gift 
so that you can break agreement with that stuff and begin that process. Mm -hmm. So we hope this has helped and been a blessing to your life. If you'd like to support further episodes, go to markdehasus.com, click the donate button, would you consider a one-time donation, or join our monthly partnership, and that will help resource what we're doing to help people to engage the healing, the freedom, the transformation that is available. Sometimes we just need the insight, and we just need the tools to walk free, and that's what we want to give to you in the months and years ahead. So thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Thank you, everyone.